Division Two, and my jaw hit the floor because this pestilence build changes everything. And it's like nothing you've seen before. I set up camp, then used it to clear District Union Arena, Legendary Stronghold, solo. It was so easy with this build, I'm thinking it's better than Negotiator's Dilemma. Bold statement. Banditos, I've never thought I could love the Pestilence. This exotic LMG has done nothing but collect dust in my stash. But with all the new Legendary and Heroic Pestilence builds I'm about to drop, I feel like I just discovered fire. How you like me now, huh? You want a disco dance with- Ow! Now just given murderous primitives the power of fire. These builds are anything but what you'd expect. Each able to wipe platoons on a godly scale with equally fantastic power and even more survivability. Built on my signature Invisi Shield platform, you will be spreading the plague of the outcast and ticking from 1.2 to over 1.4 million depending on which version you run. Those OP ticks from the pestilence will be working hard for you, providing 20% armor and listen closely more weapon damage with each kill wait think about what i just said for a moment light bulb that's right these builds are made to build up momentum so you can become even more indestructible and even more powerful and no we're not using the exotic memento backpack on top of everything all of these builds have high armor regen insane repair skills and protection from elites yup i did it let's go the weapon talent, the Plague of the Outcast, is basically like the Eclipse Protocol gear set, if the gear set was an LMG. But instead of status effects, hits apply a debuff dealing 100% weapon damage over 10 seconds, stacking 50 times. It's all about the waterfall effect, you see. Whenever an enemy dies, all the plague stacks are transferred to a nearby enemy within 25 meters. These ticks are only enhanced by raw weapon damage and multiplicative damage attributes like damage to armor or damage to targets out of cover. Crits and status effects won't help the plague. I'll tell you, this LMG is anything but fast. To get max plague damage, you must sink 50 stacks into a single target. And the way the Pesty handles, you need to spend a lot of time firing out of cover to do that. And that's where things fall apart with most Pesty builds. To make the most out of the Pestilence, you need enough power behind those stacks to be able to eliminate an elite. But you need a survivability to stay out of cover as long as possible to build those stacks. The longer you can do that and survive without losing your damage buffs, the more waterfalls you can have going at the same time, which will make you a more efficient killer than if you just otherwise relied on the brute strength of a crit build. The Pestilence is strong enough to solo strongholds. Let's quickly run through the pieces. The knee pads are Sawyers, we're after the 30% weapon damage bonus they give us. We're using the Contractor's Gloves for the LMG damage and the 8% multiplicative damage to armor. It has max repair skills on it. This perfect rainbow mask is Walker Harris for more weapon damage for the ticks, repair skills, armor regen, and protection from elites. This is going to help us stay out of cover longer and recover faster so we can spend more time plugging stacks and creating waterfalls. Oh, come on. I've seen a rainbow yesterday, but too many storms have come and gone, leaving a trace of not what God given me. Is it because my life in your This lovely and unique holster is our first piece of bellstone for 1% armor regen with more weapon damage, more armor regen, and repair skills. The chest piece is our second bellstone for 10% armor on kill. Notice I rolled weapon damage and it has glass cannon for the talent. There is no substitute for that amplified damage it gives. You have fast recovery with this build, so don't sweat it you're not that glassy. You want repair skills instead of headshot damage though. I wish I had a better piece. The backpack is Alp Summit for 20% repair skill. I rolled more weapon damage and for legendary, I am running Composure for 15% more weapon damage. Listen up. This is why you want Composure instead of Vigilance. With the Pesty build, you are constantly, and I mean constantly taking damage because you're trying to build max stacks on a single target. If you hide, you can't build more than one waterfall. With Composure, you maintain the 15% damage buff even if you take damage. Vigilance would be disabled here, so this is gonna put out more damage than Vigilance over the course. A quick look at the drone. And the booster hive is a must. Notice the handling and that horrific reload time. 
The booster will sort that out. Also, it will help you land more of your shots so you will get those stacks out faster. Go Gunner for the specialization. This gives ammo, regen, and more handling and 10% armor on kill. With this build, we have 20% armor on kill and over 2% armor regen with 39% protection from elites with amazing repair skills. I never thought I would love a legendary pestilence build. Before today, I didn't. Now, I'm a new bandito. The ticks are working for you. They're healing you as you're firing out of cover or while you're in cover. They don't complain, they don't take breaks, and never get tired. The heals and regen do their job nicely, and then big drops of armor come in as the ticks make their way around the battlefield. My jaw dropped when I realized how easy it was to clear legendary solo with this build. You still have to prioritize your targets and choose your cover wisely, but everyone falls like dominoes. It only took a few minutes and I didn't even really have to move from my campsite. So badass. Wait till you see the next build. Hey, if you're looking to play The Division 2 in new and exciting ways, this is the right channel. Join my Discord for more action and consider becoming a member of Tux's Players Club. It's only a buck. Don't miss out. Hit the join button below to get started. Also, if you dig what I'm putting down, I'd appreciate the like, comment, and a subscribe. This helps me help you, and I have lots more where this came from. This next build is what I call the ultimatum. Most everything is the same as the last build. Same mask, same gloves, same knee pads, even the same holster. But I changed the chest piece for sacrifice with perfect glass cannon. I have armor regen and repair skills on it. I changed the backpack too. It still alps with a weapon damage core, but this one has armor regen and repair skills on it. I wish the rolls were a little bit better, but it's working godly as it is. The other main difference is the talent. I decided on unstoppable force. What's cool about this is that the ticks are working for you even more. The ticks are providing survivability in armor on kill and now more damage too. With the ticks out, you get that max 25% weapon damage quickly. Then it's perpetual. And if you are a power hungry beast and you love survivability too, then this is your build. You trigger the waterfall effect quickly. Once you do, you have heals coming in from all directions, armor regen repair skills, and multiple waterfalls paying you back multiple armor on kills all the time, which is why 10% armor on kill is good to go for this build. The Pestilence is a tricky weapon to build around. To get all the survivability on an almost full red core build with glass cannon is not an easy thing to do. I'm glad I finally sat down and worked out a build series for this fan fave exotic. I can't wait to show you the next one. The next build pays back even more in kind. Let me show you. This is called the Slayer build. Everything is the same as the last build. Same mask, same gloves, same knee pads, even the same backpack. But for this version, I'm pairing up the Bellstone chest piece with glass cannon you saw on build one with the Alps backpack and Unstoppable Force. I decided after testing in the field that the ticks have so much power there's room on heroic difficulty to add even more survivability. So now we have the ticks pumping as both 20% armor on kill and 5% weapon damage on kill, stacking up to 25% more total weapon damage. The point is that with this kind of incoming power and heals, you're able to spend more time out of cover building waterfalls, making you a more effective killer to clear content even faster. I'm fighting Sinkhole on Heroic as well as an Elite Resource Convoy at the same time, so it's a mega battle. People were just dying left and right. The whole thing went at the blink of an eye. I couldn't even keep track of who was dying where, and all that was left were bodies and loot. I'm not complaining. The trick with the pestilence is to find a good spot to perch. You don't want to be moving around too much because of those knee pads. Hang tight because I have more builds to share with you. I call this next build variation the T100. It can take a heck of a lot of pain and dish it back out at the same time. So everything is the same with this build. You have the same mask, same gloves, same knees, and same holster but the chest piece is now Alps with a skill tier, armor regen, repair skills, and glass cannon, of course. The backpack is now Bellstone, but with armor, repair skills, regen, and of course, unstoppable force. We now have 1.1 million armor, 220,000 armor on kill, and 30,000 regen. And both the booster and the drone will be doing more for you because of that added skill tier. You see, it has enough power to create a perpetual waterfall on pure elites. Once we get all the damage bonuses maxed, 
We're hitting that 1.162 million. That's plenty strong enough to deal with most anything out there. And playing with this godly survivability is awesome. Feeling strong in this game is a rare thing and this build achieves that status for sure. If you're wondering, this is one of my favorites of this build set series. It's just too unique and too effective not to be. Pay attention to my armor bar and how much pain I can take and still keep firing out of cover. That's Invisible Shield, baby, with the ticks. Of course, Heroic Solo isn't scaled up like group play, but nonetheless, I would suggest any of the builds one through four for you solo players out there. If you're running group, I do suggest Composure over Unstoppable for your backpack talent so your team doesn't steal your kills. The Vigilance build is for you power hoarders who aren't concerned about maximum build effect and efficiency or survivability. It has the same gloves and the same knee pads as all the other builds. Also the same mask, but I put a crit mod on it. It has another piece of walker as the holster for more damage to armor. The chest piece is the sacrifice with max crits and perfect glass cannon. The backpack is Cheska with crits and Vigilance. This build has more survivability on it than intended. I'm using the pieces from the other builds and I didn't want to lose the rolls just for this build. Otherwise, this is a run-of-the-mill pestilence build. It looks just like any of your other typical crit builds out there. Aside from the Sawyer's knee pads and the lingering pieces, I refuse to re-roll. In the lab, it would look fine and dandy hitting over 1.4 million. What I want you to notice in the field is how often the damage buffs are deactivated. It's ridiculous. I'm still going to be able to get the job done with this kind of power, but at a very uncomfortable survival level. Remember, I have all the repair skills and armor regen I wouldn't normally have with this build. The crits are given the the weapon a little more kick but you see that's actually pulling from the gun's talent let me explain you have to come out of cover for shorter bursts to stay alive since you have all that amplified inbound damage without built-in recovery since it's harder to load up full stacks in short bursts the ticks are timing out most will notice that but basically the ticks rely on me to damage the enemy enough with the weapon so they can just finish them off that's not taking advantage of the full talent strength to do that i need to load the stacks to 50 which i can't do often because i can't be out of cover long so instead, I'm using the weapon's brute strength when I pop up for short bursts. Once the tide turns in the battle, I can spend more time out of cover and fill the stacks. Listen closely. This is what you need to know about these types of pestilence builds. To achieve max damage of 1.4 million, I need to not move so Sawyer's knee pads are maxed out for 30% weapon damage bonus. And I can't take any kind of damage. If I do, I will lose 25% weapon damage for 4 seconds. Hold up. The ticks only last 10 seconds. 4 seconds is 40% of that entire duration. Think about about that. And if we move, we lose Sawyer's 30% buff. That means we'll lose 55% damage for at least 40% of the time. That's happening a lot. What I'm trying to say is that this build is strongest when you're basically hiding and not shooting. Think about that. These builds will help you activate God Mode in The Division 2. I consider one of them the most epic build in the game with impossible survivability. Tuxedo out. Follow me.